Five, six, one. One. <laughs> no, is that too good? That was good. That was good. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> hey guys. Hey. What's up? Welcome back. We're back. Episode two. Episode two. <laughs> We're wearing orange. Yes, we are. And why are we wearing orange? I hear you. In fact, asking. the whole school is. The whole school is wearing orange, and we are wearing war paint. Because today, Mae Johnson is taking over the Cure for Cystic Fibrosis Instagram page, as she is an ambassador of that foundation, and. She is raising awareness, and whilst it's not a casual clothes day for us, it's a splat. Where come to school with a splash of orange. And yeah, we're raising awareness and raising some money at the same time. Hmm. So yeah, the whole school looks pretty orange with some balloons and ribbons and that as well. So, so we have realised that it's been a while since we've given you guys a challenge, and the first challenge that we gave. The bottle flipping challenge. That we was didn't six weeks ago. Six weeks ago, and we didn't actually announce a winner. The winner. Drum roll, please. Josh Gomez. Um, Josh, you didn't really give us proof of a bottle flip. Check this out. I flipped the switch. Bam, the bottle drops. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. But your editing skills and the fact you flipped bottles from a drone. Yeah, that just... Sick. You won. But now... This week's challenge. We have a new one. The new one. The new one. TikTok. It's a TikTok. What else would you expect? It's a TikTok. In the holidays, Kane, myself, and my older sister, who some of you may know, filmed ourselves doing a TikTok, a TikTok dance. And you will see that play right now. Okay, so, yeah, that was the dance. We want you all to have a go at that dance. We want you to add your own twist, little spin, some some costuming, potentially. Yeah, we challenge you to probably do a bit better than we did. Yeah. It, that probably won't be hard, but there will be a winner picked out of it. Yeah. So, we would love to see all your submissions posted on the page over the next two weeks and then in episode three the winner will get announced so, so give it your best will do <laughs> and now we're going to hear a joke from our friend travis micken travis micken my mate told me an onion's the only food that can make you cry so i throw a coconut at his face thanks travis it's great <laughs> now, a Hamble video, Hamble tutorial video from Joel Fogarty and Jack Forrest. Enjoy. This is the Westminster Handball Arena, the year 12s, and today we're going to show you how to play <laughs> Handball at Westminster. There are many ways to play the ball. Here are some. This is a normal shot. This is my shot. <laughs> no, I'm too lazy to do it with my hand shot. This is the header. Shot. Booty shot. 
Dude! That doesn't bounce your house. Thanks for watching. Happy, Happy handballing. Back to you, Dan and Ruby. <laughs> All right, Westminster's got talent. We have some more information on that and more details. Yep. So submissions will be closing on week six Monday. So that's June the first. And so not tomorrow, the Monday after. Yep. Remember that you can have only ten people in your group, and your submission can only be two minutes long. Now, last week, we kind of gave you a bit of a teaser on what the prize will be. And there's been a few posters up around school. So if you've caught onto that, you may have seen it already. But the prize, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. It's a big. It's big. It's three numbers. It's a $100 voucher. To, to the canteen. <laughs> to the canteen. To the senior school canteen. That's like a year's worth of cookies. But if you enter with a group, it becomes split. Yeah. So, Sorry. so, yeah, that's up to you, how you want to enter. Yeah. When you film something or you come up with your group and um, make a submission, you need to submit it to the sector page, which you will see in sector. It's called Westminster's Got Talent, and it's in the portals um, section. So you can just submit it as if you're submitting an assignment. And then we will... Download them from there, and the episodes will be aired in week seven in Tudor Times. So keep your ears out for those. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. And for the last thing in this episode, uh, Ruby and I did an interview with Mr. Ritson, who's the Year 12 coordinator, and I think most of you would all know who he is. So he's been pretty heavily involved with Canteen and has had some experiences with cancer. Um, so we thought this week we would interview him as our wellbeing segment. So yeah, yeah enjoy. enjoy. Hello, Mr. Ritson. Hello, Ruby. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ritson. Okay. Okay. So the first thing we want to know is what is your involvement with canteen and cancer in general? Um, my wife works for Canteen, funny enough, but um, my initial involvement was through getting involved with a road raise, it was, it's called, uh, which is a bike ride from Adelaide to Melbourne, um, raising money for, for Canteen. So that's, that's my involvement. Um, what is your personal experience with cancer? Um, I think most people have an experience with it, but for me personally, uh, my niece um, was diagnosed with leukaemia um, over three years ago now, so um, she was two and a half at the time, um, which was quite a shock. Um, so that was sort of, I guess, the catalyst for me to, um, to get involved um, in some charity stuff um, with you know, any charity stuff, but Canteen being a cancer charity and I guess me seeing the support that that family started to get from cancer or different types of cancer charities um, um, was something I didn't know anything about. Um, I didn't realise that, um, I just thought treatment and research, but um, a lot of your, your charities like Canteen, they actually offer support and uh, you know, they run programs and they, you know, a cancer charity came in and put a cubby house in their backyard for, for Cody Joe. Um, so the shed somewhere clean and uh, to play, um, all that type of stuff. They come and clean the house. There was all this different stuff that these charities do, um, which I guess inspired me to um, to want to give back and help out in that respect. So you said you have been involved with road raise. How many road raises have you done, and what was your experience with it this year? Uh, I've done two. 
Um, so I did two years in a row and we were supposed to ride April um, this year, uh, but it was postponed to next year because of um, um, coronavirus. Um, but yeah, I've done two and um, I, with my brother-in-law, who's um, Cody Joe's father, so both him and I um, got on this ride um, and uh, to date, two of the best weeks that I've ever been involved with. Um, how much money have you raised? Uh, personally, um, over the first two rides I've raised, I think it's 30 something thousand dollars um, in those first two. Um, and then uh, then this year, um, uh, you know, with the help of, uh, of the school leaders as well, and then to go to Canteen, um, you know, the, the, the guys and girls at, uh, at Westminster raised a further 17,000 something or other dollars for, uh, for Canteen as well, so um, which I'm super appreciative of, so that's, that's fantastic. Hey, um what advice would you give to people going through a similar situation to you? Obviously not directly affected by cancer, but having to deal with the indirect effects. Um, oh, I just, you need know, to look for support, I think. You know, um, as far as, I mean, as far as Cody Joe's cancer journey and, and their family, it's been, um, it's been really heavy at times, and they've they've struggled through you know the uncertainty of the whole situation, and, the, and I guess the fear of of what might happen. Um, but um, what I have noticed with them is that they have um, a huge support network of uh, family and friends, um, and you know if you can lean on people and, and talk about these types of things, and um, um, it's, gonna, it's only going to help. All right. Um, so, and that's something that um, you know we've tried to do with, with that family and, and and personally as well. You know, we've obviously you know we talk about it regularly, you know, at home. And, um, but that's um, would be my advice for, for people who are going through um, something like this. It doesn't have to be a, a, a cancer journey or a, a diagnosis like that. But um, talking is is key. Thank you very much for that. Um, yeah. My pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ritson, Thank for you. that interview. That was definitely very moving. And eye-opening. Yeah. Well, that concludes us for episode two. So, thanks for watching. See you next two weeks. See you in a fortnight. <laughs> Bye. I wanna hear you sing it, hey, mama. Don't stress your mind. We come.